about people who are highly sensitive, maybe suffering from more health problems or um, their sensitivity. They, they even may have more food allergies than other people do and literally more sensitive to food and how food affects their body. So these are also people who may tend to be more sensitive to like chemicals in the water or cell phone waves or anything kind of that we're taking into our bodies. We more or less just tend to absorb everything, whereas um, non highly sensitive people don't tend to be as affected as things. So for me, what ended up happening was I was living in such a totally overstimulated um, environment. Like I, ne I wasn't taking care of myself. And so that's my thing right now is really focusing on extreme self-care for sensitive people because we need to regenerate as much energy as we're losing on a regular basis. Cause really we lose a lot more energy um, through being overstimulated and not taking adequate care of ourselves. So if you're living in this totally overstimulated state and you're getting depleted, 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 and you're not, you don't have in place the ways to really build your energy back up up. So it, this goes to everything. This goes to the food that you're eating, um, the people you're putting yourself in relationships with. Uh, sensitive people tend to be the people stuck talking to like <laughs> the kind of the person who will just, um, if you've heard the term energy vampire, like someone who yeah. will talk to you for like three hours about all their problems. And we're just like, we'll just sit there and we'll like, listen, because we're really caring and we don't want that person to feel bad by being like, I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> like we don't have really the we're not great with boundaries is what I found. And so um, managing your stimulation is really important. And the way it hit me with my health was that I was just living in total depletion, total overstimulation, and it affected um, my adrenals. Uh, it affected everything. And that's, I kind of had my like whew, crash and burn. <laughs> well, it's funny. I mean, it's making me think about, and, and, and people that are familiar with, you know, my teachings, and I use this analogy of a light switch all the time. So, cause earlier you talked about the nervous system. Yeah. So a highly sensitive person has a very sensitive nervous system, right? So I use this analogy of a light switch because we know that our nervous system has kind of two different modes of functioning, either the sympathetic, the stress response, fight or flight or freeze, yeah. or the parasympathetic. So what I'm hearing you say is almost perhaps like that highly sensitive person has a much easier trigger of having their light switch flipped on. Totally. Yep. So yeah, yeah. that would mean, like you said, they're living in a stress response yeah. much more of the time or easier to get there than a, yeah. than a non highly yeah. sensitive. To get there. It takes, like, whereas it may take like 10, 10 things in a row for someone who's not highly sensitive to be like, oh, I, now my flip is, you know, we may have like one or two and we're, our flip, our switch is flipped. <laughs> 